हेलो व्यूवर्स वेलकम बैक आई एम नेहा परियानी इन टूडे सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मोनोपोली मार्केट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट मोनोपोली फॉर्म ऑफ मार्केट अर्लियर इन वन ऑफ माई प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन मार्केट एंड प्राइस डिटर्मिनेशन अंडर परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन मार्केट राइट सो इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच दैट वीडियो येट सो यू कैन गेट इट्स लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बुक्स बिलो यू कैन चेक इट आउट today we will discuss about monopoly form of market this is an imperfect competitive market right the word monopoly is a latin word mono means single and poly means seller so when we divide this word monopoly we get the meaning that is single seller this word is derived from latin language okay so by this it is quite simple that monopoly is a form of market organization in which there is only one seller of the commodity okay so you need to remember this this is the main feature of the monopoly market there is a single seller for the commodity but there can be many buyers right next there are no close substitutes for the commodity sold by the seller this is also an important point the commodities which the single seller is selling there has to be no close substitutes to it now what is this term called substitute so you can also call it as alternative product for example when you don't get the pen you can write with pencil right so pencil is the substitute for pen when you don't get tea you can consume coffee right so tea and coffee are substitutes to each other so here in this form of market there has to be no close substitutes for the commodity sold by the monopolist okay so these two points are very important next let's discuss about the features or assumptions of monopoly so before this the best example i can give you for monopoly is indian railways right so it is controlled only by the government right only government provides the service of railway to us can we see any private trains no right so indian railways is one of the best example and monopoly mainly exist when the control is in the hands of government okay so mining is another example all right now let's move on to features or assumptions of monopoly so first is one seller and large number of buyers as i told you earlier there is only one single seller in the market but there can be many buyers in perfect competition market we had many sellers as well as many buyers right so hence it was called as perfect competition market and this is the reason this is called as imperfect competition market okay next monopoly is also an industry see here in this type of market firm and industry are same right because there is only one one seller he is only called as firm and he is only called as industry hence firm and industry are same okay next restrictions on entry of new firms so here in this type of market if any firm wants to enter into this type of market there are certain restriction it is not allowed for new firms to enter into this type of market the reason is because there has to be only one seller if any type of market wants to be called as monopoly market there has to be a single seller right hence there are restriction on entry of new firms okay next no close substitutes so even this i have told you earlier right there has to be no close substitute for the commodities which are sold by the monopolist next price maker so here monopolist or the shopkeeper in the monopoly market is the price maker because he is industry itself he can fix any price that he wants right so he can charge either more or less depending upon the demand for the commodity right hence he is the price maker he has full control over the price next price discrimination so here discrimination refers to differentiation a monopolist can charge different prices at different type point of time okay so as per demand or as per maybe the status or level of the consumers he can change the prices for the commodities so there is price discrimination or price fluctuations in this type of market right next 
downward sloping demand curve see in perfect competition market we had demand curve which is horizontal straight line right but here the demand curve is downward sloping okay so as the price of the commodity increases the demand goes on decreasing hence it is a downward sloping demand curve all right next average revenue curve is also the demand curve for a monopoly market so this is a very important point here in this type of market price is equal to average revenue it is also called as demand curve okay so you need to remember this price average revenue and demand curve all are same in this type of market so this i can also call it as either demand curve or average revenue curve all right so this you need to remember now let's discuss what could be the causes for monopoly power in the market okay so the reasons are first is control over raw materials or ownership of natural resources see here in this case there will be certain organizations which will have control over certain raw materials or they may have the ownership of natural resources here i can give you the example of mining mining is under the control of government right if anyone wants to carry on the mining activities first of all they have to take the permission of government and government gives permission only to certain persons it cannot be given to each and every one right only the person who are having ownership or permission of mining can enjoy the monopoly power in this uh, in the market right so this is one example next patents so patents are like legal rights given to you by the law for discovering something new for example you have discovered something new then you get the patent rights of that so other than you anyone else cannot use it without your permission okay example could be apple company will have certain patent rights over its technology right so the technology which is used by the apple company cannot be used by others right so uh, a few years earlier we came to know about certain case regarding that right samsung company has installed certain kind of software which was already used by apple hence the samsung company has to pay certain penalty right so patent rights are like legal rights so other than you others cannot use it without your permission next technical barriers so earlier we came to know that there are certain barriers or restrictions for entry of new firms right so like that there can be many other barriers right hence there is a monopoly next government policy so if there is certain government policy like the control should only be in the hands of government or any other one particular organization then there will be existence of monopoly okay next unfair competition see here for example there is a pen its its price is around 10 rupees in the market okay so all the sellers are selling it for 10 rupees right but any one seller is selling it only for example 5 rupees then all the quantity or the all the demand will shift to that one seller right so this is an unfair competition right if he want to compete he has to sell it at the same price right can completely decreasing the price will lead to unfair competition and all the demand will shift to only one customer that hence then we can call it as monopoly right so there will be existence of monopoly power next capital size here if in case any company has huge capital size and if others are not able to compete with it or others may not have that much of capital then there will be existence of monopoly power okay next now let's discuss the difference between monopoly and perfect competition market okay so the major differences are in perfect competition market there will be many sellers and many buyers right but in monopoly single seller and many buyers so this is the main feature right single seller market is itself monopoly market so this is the main difference here there will be many sellers as well as many buyers but here in this case only single seller but many buyers next has a horizontal straight line demand curve so earlier we have discussed that it has a horizontal straight line as a demand curve but here in this case the 
monopoly market has a downward sloping demand curve so here in this case it looks like this it is downward sloping from left to right okay next perfect competitive firms are price taker monopoly competitive firm is a price maker here firm and industry are same but here firm and industry are not same firm is one individual unit and industry is group of firms right so here the price will be decided by the industry that price has to be charged by the firms in the comp perfect competitive market hence they are price takers but here in this case the monopolist itself is a price maker right he can charge any price that he wants hence he is the price maker so these are the major differences between perfect competitive firms and a monopoly firm at last let's discuss about the demand curve of a monopoly market in short run and long run so we know that the monopolist is the price maker he is the single seller and he, there are no close substitutes for the products sold by the monopolist right so he has full control over the price right so along with price he has also the control over supply okay so supply and price are in the hands of monopolist so he can charge the price whatever he wants for the products okay but here the demand is not in the hands of the monopolist right so as he go on increasing the prices the quantity demanded will go on reducing for example here if the monopolist sells a product at the price 1 then the quantity demanded will be of 5 units right so if he increase the price from 1 to 2 the quantity demanded will reduce from 5 to 4 right so in the same case if he go on increasing the prices the quantity demanded will go on reducing okay hence the demand curve is downward sloping it slopes downward from left to right okay and we also know that in monopoly market average revenue curve and demand curve and price are all same right so this i can either call it as demand curve or average revenue curve okay so now if in case the monopolist wants to increase the profits in short run what he has to do he has to reduce the prices right so when he reduces the prices the quantity demanded will go on increasing so he can earn more profits okay so this is how he can increase the prices in the short run now let's talk about the long run again in long run we have demand curve or average revenue curve which is downward sloping from left to right right and along with average revenue curve we also have marginal revenue curve which is also downward sloping okay so because this is long run we also have to consider costs average cost curve and marginal cost curve okay so this is how the demand curve looks like in the long run they both are downward sloping okay so here in long run if the monopolist wants to increase the profit there are certain conditions for it so the conditions for for profit maximization are first this mr must be equal to mc so this is an mr curve and this is an mc curve right so the point at which they both are same that is here right so they are touching each other it means that they both are same so at here so at here there is another condition which has to be fulfilled that is mc should hit the mr from bottom see here mc curve is cutting the mr curve right so here both our conditions for profit maximization are satisfied so here simply we can draw a line see here it means that if the monopolist sells the product at price 4 the quantity demanded will be of 2 at this point of time he can earn normal profits okay so here at p1 and q1 he is earning normal profits right so if the monopolist further wants to earn more profits or abnormal or super normal profits so at the point where ac curve is touching and corresponding to it the price at this point of time right so let's draw a line name it as p2 okay so if the monopolist sells the commodity at price p2 
he will earn super normal profits the reason here if he sells at this reason he will earn super normal profits okay so this rectangle let's name it as p1 a b p2 okay at this point of time he can earn super normal profits the point where mc and mr curve are touching each other that point is called as equilibrium point okay so here let's name it as p not right so if the monopoly sells the product at p not price he will be in the equilibrium position no profits and no losses okay then if the monopoly sells the product at price p1 then he will earn normal profits at this point of quantity demanded okay then if he decreases the price from p1 to p2 then he will earn super normal profits okay but he, here in this case if he increases the prices from p1 to above like p3 so this reason he will earn losses okay so if he wants to increase the profits this two conditions must be fulfilled that is this one okay this reason right so this was all about the monopoly market it features causes differences and demand curve of the monopoly in short run and long run okay guys so this was all about today if you found this helpful please hit the like button i will see you in my next videos till that happy learning